It's been six cold, wet, and stormy months, and now it's time to finally put Newfoundland to our stern. The winter in Newfoundland has come to an end, and it's time for us to move on. In this week's episode, we finally cross over the Cabot Straits to Nova Scotia. We also pay special tribute to Newfoundland and our new found friends here at the end of the video. So be sure to stay tuned and check that out. It's so exciting. We're ready to cross the Cabot Straits. We're just getting the dinghy up here and we're go finally. Kelp killing all over the deck. Oh my gosh. Maybe we can sell it. It's healthy. Maybe we can eat it. Contains a lot of iodine for sure. Okay, I'm going back to the helm. Just want to quickly show our friends so the dinghy is prepared for the dogs to ride in if the sea is not too rough and also we prepared um, a little Christmas tree no just kidding this is um, so the boys know that they can pee there because this is the tree they peed this morning and we just cut it off um, the branch so it smells like it and they know they are allowed to lift their little leg on that <laughs> so to take it off anchor mode, you gotta go here, mode, anchor, so you go to mode, navigate. Okay. We're just coming off high tide, so we get a ride, a nice little small current coming out of here. Dogs are chilling. So far, the sea is pretty quiet because we're still in the bay. Edward is sitting beside the toilet. Flynn, do you want to go in your boat? Come, you can go in your boat. Hop. Come on, jump in. Hop. No? Crossing over to Nova Scotia, across the Cabot Strait, and <clears throat> not a whole lot of wind. We had about five knots there, four knots of wind, and we were just crawling along. But we have ample sunshine, so the cool thing is, uh, with no swell, we're able to put out the full array of solar and I can pick up about 1200 watts of solar energy. And then I set the ocean bolt motors to use about the same. So we've increased our speed now to 3.8 and we just got about eight knots of wind, nine knots of wind now. So we're trying something new, <clears throat> using the same amount of energy that's coming in to kind of propel us along. We're trying to catch up to some wind um, it stays sort of in the middle of the, the Gulf here, over the Laurentian Channel. <clears throat> and um, see if we can catch up to that wind, stay in that wind, because it kind of dies off as we move. And uh, we want to not be in that dead zone so much and uh, not have to rely on motors. Because I'd like to be putting power back into the bank. We started the day off at about 93%. Our batteries are 93%. They're now down to about 92, um, and we'll see how the rest of the day goes with this strategy. We've never tried it before, but finally the sun's shining like really well, and so we can really collect a bunch of solar. So we'll see how it goes. It is June 1st, and it's my mom's birthday today. Happy birthday to my beautiful mom in Germany. Herzlichen Glückwunsch, Mama. Ich weiß, du sprichst ganz gut genug Englisch. Oh, I have to do that again. <laughs> I can't speak German anymore. <laughs> Herzlichen Glückwunsch, Mama, zum Geburtstag. Ich weiß, dein Englisch ist gut genug, aber ich dachte, vielleicht willst du das Video deinen Freunden zeigen. Herzlichen Glückwunsch, alles Gute und bleib immer so jung, wie du bist. Well, we made it halfway 
over to Nova Scotia. It's evening and the sun is going down and it looks just awesome. Most of the way over from uh, Newfoundland across the Cabot Straits. And we actually made really good time, really good speed, uh, but we had to slow down because the entrance into Bradore Lakes uh, has quite a strong current. And uh, we made it just a little bit too quick, so we had to slow down. So, But we're enjoying it. The weather is super nice. Um, experienced a little bit of everything overnight. We had 23, 25 knots of wind down to no wind. It rained. Um, had some really cool phosphorescence in the water, which I always love, and uh, it was just like the perfect sail across the straits. So we're really fortunate and super glad to be over here. We're just about to cross back into Canadian waters. We've been in international waters here for the last several miles, and uh, that's kind of a cool thing. And then we'll take down the the uh, Newfoundland Burgee for the first time in six months. We're supposed to do that a couple months several months ago. <laughs> well, we just get around to it now. Anyway, enjoying a bit of the sunrise here uh, and enjoying the uh, warming up period. Quite a cool thing. Still can't see land, but it's out there somewhere. We arrived. You can see land just over the horizon here. Land Ho, and we are officially crossed and uh, just a couple miles away from Nova Scotia. And we'll uh, anchor out just outside the channel, the Brodeur Channel there, or Straits, whatever they're called, and uh, wait for the tide to turn. And uh, then we'll head in about four o'clock this afternoon, and then we'll tie up the hook for the night, I think in a place called Kelly's Cove. And uh, we'll officially be in Nova Scotia. Uh, it's significantly warmer today, kind of wearing the toque for, I don't know, maybe nostalgia's sake. So hopefully these are the last days that I have to wear a winter hat. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But uh, off in the distance over here we have Fish Islands, which is always a good sign. That's kind of the first thing we look for coming into the channel. And then way off over there would be North Sydney, which is uh, where we first boarded the ferry over to Newfoundland a year and a few months ago. So yeah, quite a round trip ticket for sure. We are here um, at the entrance of the channel to Brador Lake and there's a pretty strong current going in and out. So we're just waiting for the opportune moment to go in there. So the current is taking us in and we don't have to go against the current. It's pretty foggy here and the air is humid, which makes it makes it also pretty cold again. We're just not getting lucky to go in the warmth. But so once again, we're bear pulling it. We're buying some time to let the current switch. But uh, right now we have enough wind to kind of blow us towards the channel. So we actually are making some headway, but we can tell the current's still coming out. So we're doing uh, almost a half a knot by GPS over ground. So half knot speed over ground, but uh, speed through the water is 1.7 knots. So we can 
you can definitely tell like the water's moving faster underneath us than we're actually going forward so current's still heading out a bit but by the time we uh, hit the first channel markers we should start seeing a little bit of the ebb tide and the conversion here and then we can maybe even race some sail and sail all the way down the channel that would be really cool so we're getting to the narrowest part of the entrance here and the current has definitely picked up. We thought it was going to slack off here, but there's some pretty, pretty cool little waves. Not crazy bad, but um, we got almost two knots of current against us, which is insane. It should have dropped off. Well, we think it should have dropped off by now. Uh, and oh, and there are lobster pods everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lots of hurt and, and shallows, like there's a just a two foot one and yeah. Yeah, shallows and lobster pots just to add to the fun. And just behind us here is a wall of rain. And so we're gonna get hit with some weather right as we come through the narrowest, probably trickiest part. We could have waited a little longer, but boy, the dogs really need to get off the boat. And uh, they're, they're just refusing to do their duties on the boat today for some strange reason. It's the first day they haven't done it. But, um, anyway, now we're in the thick of it. After over six months of sailing around this island during the winter and spring, we were bound for warmer waters and less furious weather. Spending the winter sailing around Newfoundland was never part of our plan, but it ended up being a fortuitous and once-in-a-lifetime experience. We learned a lot during our winter sailing around Newfoundland, things you never learn sailing in the tropics. Winter sailing here sometimes put us in survival mode, and in others in expedition and adventure mode. We definitely push the envelope of living off-grid in this remote, subarctic, frozen landscape. It's sailing on a whole different level up here in the North Atlantic, and a challenge nearly every minute you're on the water, especially in winter. In winter, it's a cold, frozen, desolate feeling burrowing itself inside. This island is only kept warm by the resilience and friendliness of the amazing people that live here and call Newfoundland their home. We met so many wonderful people, at every stop around the island, and we are forever grateful for making lasting friendships. Along the way, we witnessed majestic mountains, spectacular fjords, coastlines, and islands that simply made our jaws drop, and we were still picking them up off the cockpit floor. Newfoundland often makes you feel small and absolutely insignificant. You feel isolated amongst the grandeur of barren rocks, wilderness, mountains, and ocean, and it makes you thankful to be alive. Although our time spent in Newfoundland during the winter season felt like an eternity to get through, looking back, it will be an everlasting, amazing experience. Thank you, Newfoundland. Thank you to The Rock for sharing your spectacular wilderness and unlocking the doors to a winter sailing expedition that will not be forgotten. Thank you to the countless friends we met along the way for welcoming us, supporting us, lending us your car, giving us rides, telling us your story, sharing your history, sharing Newfoundland's history, giving us advice, inviting us to the local dance hall, playing live music for us, and passing along your wisdom. Thank you for your friendship and everlasting memories. Thank you, Newfoundland. We will be back. Maybe just not in winter, on a sailboat. <laughs>
Thanks for watching. You can support us and our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Check out the links below for additional ways to support our mission and if you want to further support the creation of these videos and enjoy additional benefits, skip the lines at Patreon and head to our independent creator support platform and become a team member. See you all next week.